chapter 17, video 3. We're in the midst, again, of the Civil War. Um, we're going to look at some different aspects of it in this video. One is the government. Now, the northern government is going to be able to continue pretty much as if there weren't a war going on. The Congress will, protect, will pass various measures that they had wanted, that southerners had been able to block in the past. They'll also just pass other things that needed to be passed at the time, and they don't have to worry about the southerners' perspective on any of those bills. With their finances in the North, um, they are going to increase taxes in the North, um, but it's going to take a while for that to come in. They also are going to print money, uh, paper money, during the war, but they're going to do so very carefully to avoid inflation, and they will sell bonds. Now, the Southern finances were not in very good shape. We tried to raise tariffs. But once the North had established their blockade, we don't have any imports coming in to charge tariffs on. Uh, the South raised taxes, but the South very quickly hit poverty um, during the war as a result of the blockade and so forth. And so to raise taxes, first of all, you couldn't get blood from a turnip, so they um, weren't getting the money and the taxes just made people mad. The South is going to print paper money as well, but they won't do it as wisely. And so you will see pretty bad inflation. Now, as far as politics goes in the North, um, you do see the formation of the Radical Republicans, and they will form something called the Joint Committee on the Conduct of the War, which really criticized and analyzed Lincoln's handling of the war. And it will be the Radical Republicans who will be very difficult for the South to deal with during Reconstruction when the war is over. You also see in the North the War Democrats who supported Lincoln even though Lincoln is a Republican, these war Democrats are going to support Lincoln. And you also see a group called Copperheads, who were Northerners who supported the South. Now, Lincoln is going to have to worry about re-election, because he's going to have an election in 1864. Um, he is running with the same party that he always had, but he's going to call it the National Union Party, because that sounded nice and unified. Um, he is going to choose a new running mate. His previous vice president, Hannibal Hamlin, had died. And so he chooses a new running mate, an Al Andrew Johnson. Now, Andrew Johnson was a war Democrat from Tennessee. So what that means is he is a Southerner who has supported the North. Lincoln is thinking that in this next four years, the war will end, the South will come back into the country, and he thought it would be easier if there were a Southerner as his vice president. That might be a fine idea, but he made a poor, poor choice in Andrew Johnson, and that would cause a lot of trouble during Reconstruction. What ends up happening with Andrew Johnson is Northerners don't trust him because he's a Southerner, and Southerners don't trust him because he supported the North. Now, in the election of 1864, the Democrats were in George McClellan, who was very critical of Lincoln's handling of the war, particularly Lincoln's firing of George McClellan. Um, Lincoln expected to lose. He really thought that he was going to lose, but there will be a big win that we talk about right before the election, and that's going to give him the boost that he needs to win. Now, Southern politics, in the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis had a six-year term, so he didn't have to worry about re-election um, until really the war was over before he would have been up for re-election. But he is dealing with um, starving women who are rioting in various state capitals. He is facing a great deal of criticism among um, the politicians in the South. Uh, his own vice president of the Confederacy is very critical of him, and he really um, doesn't have very many fans in government. The biggest problem for the South, though, is that they had created a Confederate form of government. And remember, we learned under the Articles of Confederation, in a Confederate form of government, each state acts like a separate country. So you don't have the unity that you need to be effective when fighting a war. Um, your book also makes some comments about the environment, and it, it brings up some things for us to really try to absorb about the Civil War. Roughly 750,000 people are going to die in this war, in the, the span of this war, whether it is from wounds or disease or accidents or old age or whatever. It's a huge number of people die in the years of this war. Um, there also was a ridiculous number of animals that died, even up to, in the, the last year of the war, 500 horses a day are going to die. And that certainly has a big impact. 
um, when you look at the south and you see that both armies, huge numbers in these armies, will be just foraging off the land, we see almost the complete decimation of the hog population. You're, you struggle to find a chicken around. Um, we see great damage done to trees, forests, um, the levees to, you know, whatever. Because if you figure, if you have an army of 40,000 and you have 10 who sit around a fire each night, how many fires is that? And you have to have firewood for all those fires. So there's a lot of damage that ends up being done and an environmental impact that comes from that. One quick battle before we go on is the Battle of Chancellorsville. The Union forces will be led by Joseph Hooker. Joseph Hooker allowed women to travel with the army, not just to cook or sew or do laundry, but to provide for other needs that the soldiers might have. Um, these women were called Hooker's girls, and then they became simply known as Hooker's. Anyway, he is uh, the head of the army of, a, of roughly 130,000 troops. Um, the South, led by Robert E. Lee, will have about 60,000. So again, he is outnumbered two to one, but that's what happened with him pretty much every battle. Um, Stonewall Jackson is going to surprise Northern General Hooker um, on the right flank, and the South will win this battle at Chancellorsville. It is a big win for the South but with heavy losses, not just in troops, but Stonewall Jackson will be shot by his own men.